Okay, good morning everybody and thank you for that um, nice intro there, Carly. So the the goal or my goals for the next um, 30 minutes and or 45 minutes is to give you actionable insights for your business to uh, implement this afternoon. Things that are going to make a difference uh, right off the, the bat. So what we're going to go over are going to be five core areas that as a business owner you can implement or you can have your web uh, web designer implement as well with, with the outcome being the website gets more visibility more often and you're going to get more sales and leads online. So uh, let's kick off. Um, I won't hang around on this slide too much, Carly introduce myself, uh, my name is Christian, uh, I'm from the agency Marwick Internet Marketing in British Columbia here and also the co-founder for the Canadian Internet Marketing Conference. Um, some interesting facts so we can get to know each other. As you can tell, I'm not from Canada, from a small island called England. Um, I now live in Squamish, BC, and the top right there is uh, I used to surf professionally throughout my teenage and early 20s. And during that time, I worked really closely with a lot of um, high-level marketing departments, and that's what kind of triggered my uh, in inspiration to learn more about digital marketing as that was evolving um, alongside their general marketing strategies. And that's Eva Arpag, I just thought I'd throw that in there for a bit of fun. Uh, she's not too impressed about wearing this Santa outfit, but who can blame her? Um, so what we find a lot of time with our marketing agencies is this kind of vicious circle for a, for a small to medium-sized business owner. And the first, the, on the first image on the left, you understand that your business needs to be top of Google or Bing or any of the search engines for phrases that are non-brand related. Uh, for example, a plumber in Vancouver or a realtor in Langley. Uh, if, if somebody is searching those terms, we need our website to be there. Uh, now what happens is, unfortunately, digital marketing does suck and the reason it sucks is because you get completely bombarded as a business owner from telemarketing companies uh, pretending to be Google, um, SEO, dozens of emails a day. I'm sure your junk box is full of these kind of promises of getting you to the top of Google for $50. And you have an option to either kind of ignore that, but the temptation there is maybe to try it. Sometimes the experience isn't that great. And then there's no progress after a couple of months, so you kind of stick your head in the sand. A couple of months pass, and you're back to square one where you realize you do need some visibility. And it's kind of like this vicious circle where a lot of business owners get stuck in a rut because they're not sure of the direction to take, so they don't take any action. And that's something we see quite a lot. So our job as a digital marketing agency in BC is actually 90% of it is educating and helping businesses understand what needs to be done. So that's what we're going to use the time for today. And um, like I say, towards the end, we'll open uh, for some questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. So, okay. Uh, please make sure you do have pen and paper ready because there'll be quite a bit to jot down. I know Carly will send these slides afterwards, but it's always good to make accompanying uh, notes with them. Um, so just for you, for uh, taking the time out of your day, um, we're going to give you at least kind of five, there's actually more than five, but some good actionable insights that you can implement right away. And I do have a gift for everyone if you stick around to the end. And we also have uh, opportunity for five businesses to um, take this conversation on further after this call. So it's something to bear in mind. Okay, the first uh, biggest kind of low-hanging fruit for your website. So when we're talking about visibility, there's one component that is uh, vital and gets overlooked quite a bit. So what this is, is it's referred to as an XML sitemap. So this is effectively your uh, index page. If, if your website was a book, this is your contents page, your contents table. So you can easily find all the different chapters from that list of um, titles. Now an XML sitemap on a website is exactly the same. It lists out all the pages on your website and then you can submit that to Google uh, being in Yahoo. So you're telling Google what pages you have and how often to visit them to keep the website up to date. Now what happens is a lot of the time is when a, a web designer builds a page, this can get skipped over and then you're kind of up to the mercy of the search engines to try and find your website and you're kind of hoping that the, the little Google bots will kind of stumble across it. So 
having a sitemap is crucial and it, you're telling Google, here's my pages, this is what I want you to read. Now an easy way to um, check if you have one is actually to go to your website and type in sitemap.xml. Now if you have one, uh, it may um, move into like this screenshot here where, it's, where it kind of expands and you can see kind of sub maps you may see a list of pages. If you see all of that, then that's perfect. You, you have a sitemap, and now you can take that and through Google Webmasters, which is a free tool, it's kind of like the garage for your, your car, um, you can submit that sitemap to Google. Now, if you type in sitemap.xml and you don't get anything back, uh, maybe it's a blank page or maybe you have like an error 404, then you don't have a sitemap. So, uh, one of the first things to do, make sure you have one. If you don't have one, get one. Um, and once you do have one, make sure you have submitted it manually through Google Webmasters. Uh, you may come across another sitemap, which is a HTML sitemap. That is purely uh, down to usability. That, that's more for humans. So it will actually be a page where it lists out all the different pages in a nice kind of styled uh, web page that looks like the rest of your website. So that is more for human use. So the sitemap that we really want for search engines is this XML one. And again, best way to test it is type in your web address, do forward slash sitemap.xml and uh, see what you come up with there. While we're talking about actually on-site SEO, so for those that you, if the terminology doesn't make sense, that's, that's fine. Search engine uh, SEO it refers to search engine optimization, and that's effectively making your website as attractive as possible for the terms you want it to be found for for the search engines. Um, it is split into two areas. One is the work that's done on the website, and then there's the uh, secondary area, which is off-site SEO. So the sitemap, which we just spoke about, is going to be an area that's referred to as on-site SEO. SEO, on-site search engine optimization. So you're trying to make your website as robust and as attractive as possible. And while we're in that kind of space, here are some other really, really simple things that either to review on your own website or implement uh, straight away. So we mentioned the, the error page. Um, all these, if they're implemented correctly, that they're not on their, on their own individual basis gonna make or break the website overnight. And what they will do is they will all help uh, increase the organic ranking of the website by 5-10%. So when they all work together, that's when you'll see a lift in the website's organic ranking, uh, not one individual thing making the big difference. So going back to the first one here, the error page. This is uh, really simple to test. If you go to one of your sub pages and then in the uh, extension of that web page, for example, it could be Vancouver, or if we take the marwickmarketing.com and then maybe the, the contact us page. Uh, on the contact us in the actual URL, if you type in an additional letter or you just you purposely break that link, so you can type in an extra letter and contact us and put a number in there, then in an ideal world what happens is it will trigger, because that page doesn't exist, it will trigger a 404 error page. Now, you want that page to provide uh, high usability to that user so that if they do come across a genuine broken link on your website, maybe they're looking at a product or a service or the About Us page, and they click on a link, if it goes to a branded 404 page, you give them the option to return to the home page, maybe uh, use a search bar, uh, navigate their way around the website. Now, if you don't have one, what you'll just see is a, it will just become a blank screen and it will just say error 404. Now what happens is a lot of the time is that that potential customer or client will just close the website down and go to the next one. So um, it has a small rank, ranking factor for Google, but it also has a really high uh, customer retention um, uh, mileage to it as well. The second thing to be aware of are page titles. Again, massively overlooked. So you can see um, I've put in our page titles down below. Now, if we, if we were trying to target our brand name, Marwick Internet Marketing, we, we're already kind of assuming that that person searching already knows about us and they're going to find us whatever. What we want to be found for 
uh, the, the bigger audience, the people that don't know about us, that are looking for our services. So one of our keywords is marketing agency Vancouver. So what we tend to do, and this is something to think about your website, is what is that number one uh, keyword and come down from there as well. So we have marketing agency Vancouver might be our top one and then our second tier keywords might be web design company, SEO company, Vancouver and so on. And so you kind of tear out your keyword list. Now when we're talking about page titles, it's always good to keep the, your core keyword at the beginning of the page title and then break it up with either a dash or a, a vertical line and then the brand name. So you're still getting that brand recognition but having the keyword within the page title. Um, you can see there's, I put in a, another example, Vancouver Landscaper dash Chris and Bob's Landscaping Incorporation. Now what this does is it sets the pace for the rest of the page. When the Google spider bots are kind of scanning the HTML code to decide what this what this page is about and where it should be placed, you're straight off uh, straight away you're suggesting that this page is about Vancouver Landscaper or a marketing agency in Vancouver. Now try and keep that theme throughout the page itself. So we come back to that in a minute. But for example, if you're using uh, WordPress or you have a, a coder, making sure that you're making good use of the H1, like the smaller headers, so the subheaders, H1 is the biggest, H2 is the next smallest and so on. And without being too aggressive, you can incorporate the keywords into this, so for example here, this may be a good example of like a H3 header, we pride ourselves on being the best Vancouver landscaper. So it reads correctly, it, it's not spammy, and it just so happens that we're kind of then kind of giving Google another nudge that this is what our page is about. In the actual content of that page, remember that Google doesn't see all your nice images and your colors and all that kind of thing necessarily. It will just read a lot of HTML that makes up that web page. So it's a good practice to ensure that you have enough text, readable text on that page for Google to figure out what that page is all about. So, if you have uh, a really good example of something that's not so good is a, f a photographer's website. So the f photographer's website is just full of beautiful pictures and hardly any text. So Google isn't going to see that picture, it's going to read the file name for that picture. So making sure that your the content on that page is um, that you have enough text that it you depending on the industry as well and how competitive you have enough text that it's it's Google's able to understand what it is that page is about. Uh, if you are a photographer and um, you know you, you don't have much room for putting in text, then at least making sure that the photos that you're uploading are keyword rich. So instead of it being a, a picture that you've downloaded from your camera and it's uh, DM five six two five one dot JPEG, rename it on your desktop as. Vancouver Maternity Photographer JPEG or you know, Squamish Adventure Photographer JPEG. So you again, all these really, really small nuts and bolts will help that website become more attractive to those search engines. Um, number five here, I mentioned about theming pages for users and search uh, search engines. And to give you an example, if if you are in a slightly uh, medium to high high competitive industry, maybe that's finance or retail or real estate, then is it wise to kind of split out your um, your top keywords into separate pages? So if you did a comparison between a company that had offered landscaping, hardscaping and say lawn maintenance and you tried just to try and optimize the home page for all of those, it's going to be a little bit weaker than a website that has dedicated, a, you know, the home page is about landscaping then they have a hardscaping page. So all the page titles, the images, the content is all about hardscaping. Then the, that one is more likely to do better over one that's kind of a bit more blended. Again, depends on how competitive your industry is. Number six, your meta description. Uh, this actually ha doesn't have any um, SEO factor in terms of the way Google reads it. So. The meta description for each page is, if you look at the example of the Marwick one I've done here, is, is actually the kind of little paragraph you get there, thank you for marketing agency, experts in digital marketing and so on. That actually doesn't um, pull as much as they like the page titles, but what it 
does do is this gives this is your sales pitch. This is effectively your 160 or characters or 240 characters to sell your business to jump out from the page as somebody's scanning through. So that way it doesn't directly influence the search results. It's your opportunity to catch someone's eye. So really think about that. A lot of websites pull this automatically. Uh, if you're using WordPress, you may find that it's just kind of automatically generated. So go in and kind of you know sparkle it up a little bit there. Um, a new kind of good uh, uh, Google ranking factor and just good practice these days is to use um, HTTPS. So more of a secure using that. Uh, a secure connection, um, your website's less likely to get hacked, which is happening more and more often. And uh, it gives Google, will, uh, they've recently said that they will start to place these websites slightly higher over others that don't have it. And finally, uh, I put mobile responser at the bottom. Um, the reason why is it probably has been the most talked about uh, topic on SEO for the last two years. So I'm sure everyone's heard that if you don't have a mobile responsive website, not only are you going to lose a lot of customers um, that will struggle to use it on their ever-growing tablet and phone devices, but Google on um, mobile devices, tablets, and phones will now uh, it has actively started decreasing a website's position um, just because it's not providing the end user the experience that Google wants. So um, while that one's at the bottom, the only reason it's at the bottom is because it's been talked about so much, and uh, most websites should be mobile responsive these days. So. So those last two slides, check out your website. What we're trying to do with on-site SEO is kind of patch a leaky bucket. So the more, the, the stronger and more robust the, the bucket, then the more kind of water and stuff you can throw at it and it's more likely to have a better benefit. The, once your website is as strong as it can be, what you're looking for now in terms of organic search engine optimization is giving Google uh, a signal that, that your website is popular, it's trusted, um, and it's a, an amazing resource for landscaping in Vancouver, for example. So one of the factors, and this is one factor that won't go away, is what websites link to, to yours. Uh, Google last year did a test version of what Google would look like without links being a ranking factor, and it just didn't work. So at least for the, the next couple of years, um, having strong backlinks to your website is still uh, a very, very valid um, uh, form of search engine optimization. So some places to get good backlinks uh, are your social profiles. Obviously, you have dozens and dozens of um, social media platforms where they give you the ability to link to your website. Partnerships, this is a really strong one. So if you are, a, for example, a realtor in Vancouver, then there's a good chance you're going to be working with a home inspector, you're going to be working with a mortgage broker, you're probably with a moving company, and you have your own network offline. So exchanging links and um, between the, the group of you is going to work well because they're all businesses in the same area. They're all trusted websites because of, because of that, because they're in the same area then, and they're not full of spam. Um, so you, you're providing a nice little kind of like link network. Another thing you can do is also interview the home inspector. Get them to, uh, you know, write a blog about the home inspector on your real estate page, and swap in links that way. In return, they interview you as well. So it's a really nice way to generate blogs, which in turn, if you've done it correctly, can uh, create some really good links back and forth. So you're providing value to the user on your website by giving them more information so they can click through, and Google likes to see that. Uh, from from websites. Another place uh, to get good backlinks would be from more established trusted websites than your own. And a um, bit of plug here, so the Better Business Bureau, the, your link in your listing, uh, any of the Chamber of Commerces, you know, they're all highly trusted websites. Uh, local newspapers, tend their, their websites tend to have been around for a long time. They have good authority. So if you have an article that goes out in the paper, make sure they you get the digital version and the, the linking back to you and so on. Um, another, another little area here, if you use Flickr, uh, you can actually, which is a, a social media platform for uploading photos. Uh, you know, you might be a roofing company where you're uploading your recent projects. This is a good place to place them because Flickr actually allows you to place links under each picture as well. And 
finally, and this is you know this is just a very small list. There's endless uh, ways of doing this. And finally, online PR is the best way to build uh, backlinks. So if you have an event, a community event, you do run a, a, a charitable contest, all those things are going to help generate good backlinks to your website. Um, what we have focused on good backlinks, and at this point, it's really, really good for me to stress: don't ever buy backlinks. So the temptation it will be to, and you'll see it, and you uh, you probably have emails about it that you can buy 100 strong PR uh, backlinks for fifty dollars. Now, what what that's just all that's going to do is end up. Uh, penalized that will end up penalizing the website because Google's smart enough to know if it's a genuine link to your website or if it's just one that's been uh, manipulated by software and all that kind of stuff. So, um, without going into too much detail, don't ever buy bulk backlinks. Um, there's a high chance that it will actually have a negative effect to your website, and it does happen a lot where it's that negative that Google bans your website completely and you have to start again with a fresh domain name and all that kind of stuff. So uh, one piece of advice, don't ever buy backlinks, as tempting as it might be and as good as it might sound. Okay, so, um, so we covered off like the, the organic placement of your website. If, you're, if you can place your website high on Google or, or any of the other search engines for your non-branded search term, you will just get a whole bunch more leads um, that you're not necessarily paying for, you're not paying per click, not necessarily advertising, and life is good. There is another area that is uh, used a lot, and this is uh, referred to in a whole bunch of different ways. It can be SEM, so search engine marketing, could be called pay, uh, PPC, pay per click, uh, Google AdWords, it's all effectively the same thing. So this is paying a price per click a price every time somebody clicks on one of your adverts. Now the adverts typically show in the top three places on Google and then down the right hand side, I'm sure everyone's quite familiar with that. It's pretty easy to set up. Um, a lot of businesses complain it's expensive and doesn't work. Now what happens and the reason why uh, a business will complain that it's expensive and doesn't work is because they don't necessarily focus enough on this. And this is your negative keyword list. So if you run any form of SEM or pay-per-click or Google AdWords or anything that involves paying to be on Google, this is something that you definitely need to keep an eye on or um, ask for access for because it's the difference between having something that works and something that's just going to get expensive and frustrating. So um, everyone's probably pretty familiar with having a good keyword list for your company. You know, it makes sense. It applies to your organic search engine optimization. So. An example would be landscaping company, landscaper, landscaper Vancouver, all those terms you want your business to be found for if you're a landscaping business in Vancouver. Now, with paid advertising, SEM or pay-per-click or Google AdWords, there's a good chance that sometimes your ads might show for something that is relevant but not your client base. So, for example, somebody looking for landscaping books or uh, a young student looking for a landscaping a landscaper course they're not going to be the guys booking, a, uh, booking you to build a retaining wall. They're just researching to become a landscaper. So in a paid capacity, you can set a negative keyword list so that your ads aren't showing if somebody types in landscaper jobs in Vancouver. And, and obviously, this list becomes longer and longer and longer the, the more you monitor it and check out what people are actually searching versus your keyword list. So um, a really good, good place to start and it would save you a whole bunch of money if you are um, on one of those programs, such an uh, SEM program or pay-per-click program. The next area is being aware of your cost per conversion. So it's one thing bringing lots of people to your website through social media, through uh, the organic index on Google, or maybe through your business listing or paid ads, but being aware of which one generates the most conversions is is crucial. It's the, the, the epicenter of everything around digital marketing. And if you are using SEM or pay-per-click, making sure that you're aware of what your cost per conversion is. So we're kind of we're going deeper than how many impressions your advert had, how many 
uh, clicks, how many people came to your website. We all want to know for for a particular keyword, which is the keywords that actually get you the email inquiries or phone calls. So it's super, um, super important to do that and keep monitoring it. Um, see here, so we, the, I think this is the final one, and this kind of ties everything together, and it's so cheap, it's like the Robin Hood of uh, digital marketing. So if you're not familiar with remarketing, let's run through what it is, and that is, your potential prospect is looking for a landscaping business in Vancouver. They visit your landscaping website. In an ideal, perfect world, they'd ring you up straight away and say, amazing, uh, we want to book you for a $50,000 um, renovation on our front yard. And then that would be the perfect life and you'd be living in the Caribbean island, no doubt. Now, the reality is that's not the case. The prospect goes to your website, it goes to Bob's website, it goes to Jack's landscaping website and they go to a whole bunch of different places. Now, if you have remarketing set up, what happens is when that prospect um, leaves the website, for up to, up to anywhere between 30 days and 90 days, that person sees your branding and advertising on third-party websites. So it's very specific to them, and uh, it keeps you top of mind while they're going through that kind of um, buying process of evaluating their options. Now the reason why it's so effective and so cheap is that prospect will likely see your advert maybe let's say nine to 12 times over a period of two months. You don't pay for it at any moment during that time unless that person clicks on the advert and returns to your website. So two good things there. One is a whole bunch of branding for pretty much for free. Stay on top of mind while that person goes through the process of deciding what it is they want to do, who they're going to um, buy from, and how they're going to book it. And then when they do actually uh, see you out and go, okay, that was the landscaping company that I spoke to two weeks ago. The other guys haven't really got back to me. I'm going to click on the ad and take me straight back to the website. So I'm not having to remember the URL. I'm not trying to remember the name of the company, something I recognize. At the moment they click, that's when it costs you. Now. The nice thing is because you're not competing with anyone now, you are only advertising to them because they were on your website, the cost per click is usually less than a dollar. A lot of the time it's like 20 cents. So imagine somebody that ha any, anyone that's slightly interested in your service in the last three months, it costs you 20 cents to get them back to the website and re-engage with you. It's, it's one of the most uh, underused, um, awesome ways of staying top of mind and for next to nothing. Uh, remarketing can get really smart, and you may have seen it now that we're talking about it, where you can do uh, dynamic remarketing. So if you if somebody was interested in hardscaping and they went to the hardscaping page, they would see our hardscaping advert. If they were interested in lawn care and they that's where they spent the time, then they would see our lands, uh, lawn care adverts, not a hardscaping one. So uh, really good, pretty simple to set up as well. Um, okay, so we have, uh, there's a lot to digest and I want to make sure we have a little bit of time here for questions. Um, hopefully there's more than five actionable things that you can go implement or ask somebody check, to check for you. The uh, other thing that I wanted to mention here is that I, uh, we had a gift. I had a gift for sticking it out with me and, and uh, that, and that is the Canadian Internet Marketing Conference is uh, an event where business owners come every year to learn from some of the best in the industry. And 2016, we have some of the you know top marketing people um, from eBay and Yahoo and WestJet all come and learn uh, to present case studies and insights. So, um, what I would like to do for you guys is actually give you a free ticket, and the free ticket is available using that code. Again, don't worry about writing it all down. I can uh, liaise with Carly to how we give you those tickets. Uh, but it's a two-day event and it's it's well worth the time investment. Uh, there's no financial investment because I'm going to give you a ticket, but just come up and learn from the, uh, you know, some of the best uh, marketers in the whole of Canada. Uh, the third thing I mentioned was if, uh, aside from these the questions which we will do shortly, if there's, um, we we have time uh, probably next week for to take this conversation further for five companies, 
Um, if that is of interest to you, if you want to delve a bit deeper, we have a lot of resources and research papers we can pull for all kinds of different industries. Um, just send, send us over a, a quick email and they're just the free items I need. They're just the company name, your website, and phone number and we can look at uh, your potential audience reach. Are you making the most out of your, um, your marketing time and all that kind of stuff as well. So what I will do now is um, hopefully hear from Carly and see if she has any questions for me. Hi, Christian. Thanks so much for that. Uh, okay, we're going to open up for questions. If anybody has any questions, you can use, uh, like I said, the question function at the bottom of the control panel. Um, I'll relay the questions to Christian. And um, yeah, so does anyone have any questions? Okay, so we have one question here from Alana. Okay, her question is, can we get a copy of what has been presented? Absolutely. So I'm going to send a copy or uh, of the presentation to everyone in a follow-up email. So you will all get this. Um, so no worries there. Does anybody else have any questions? I'm not seeing anybody with any more questions here. Obviously, you did a really good job of presenting. <laughs> There's no question. <laughs> uh, let me just see here. Um, oh, um, okay, so Sharon has a question. What's your question, Sharon? Oh, and Serena said that the uh, your presentation was fantastic. Oh, thank you. Uh, so what course would you recommend for producing a web page? Sorry, say that again. What course would you recommend for producing a web page? Ooh, so if you wanted to produce your own kind of like basic web page, um, I believe there's some really good places that are starting up in around Vancouver that offer courses. I'm just trying to think of them off the top of my head. Um, I think it's like the Red, Red Academy. Um, so there's actual in-person courses you can do in Vancouver and there are definitely some um, online courses. So a good place to start is maybe if you really want to kind of have a go at building a website yourself, there are, there are websites like Wix that provide really easy drag and drop solutions um, and there will be a lot of um, helpful advice along the way and their customer support is pretty good. And then if you want to take it up a level, then I would suggest maybe looking at WordPress, which is a bit more robust. And um, there's a lot of training courses, again, online, which are probably more uh, cheap and effective. And it, or take one of the courses in Vancouver. And like I said, I think one of the companies is called um, Red Academy, and I think there's one called Spring. Uh, so yeah, just check, check those out. OK. Um, so we have one from Serena as well, again. What is the best resource for improving social media skills? We want to keep it in-house, however, we are not great at it. Good question. So, um, so that keep in top on your social media things, uh, like it, it would be kind of heading off to like these kind of like conferences. There's the social media camp in Victoria every year, and I think they even do a digital ticket. So, if you aren't able to get to the island, you could watch um, the Canadian Internet Mind Conference would be good. So if you're basically trying to stay um, relevant using the platforms you already know how to use. And so what happens at those kind of conferences is people give you ideas and insights on how to use something you already know how to use, keeping it in-house and keeping it relevant. So I would say either attending webinars like this, uh, attending conferences where they're sharing social media practices is probably the best way to use what you're already using um, but come up with fresh ideas so you're not doing the same thing all the time. Okay. Um, hopefully that answered your question. And we have another question from Jordan. Um, he says, great presentation. I also need a website built. We have a wireframe design and we need it coded slash built. I've had quotes from $2,000 to $8,000. Any good recommendations? Um, if it depends, it depends on how 
the functionality and how big the website is. Um, the quotes seem pretty fair from from what I would guess. Uh, again, it just depends if you if you have other functionality like e-commerce and stuff, then that would be a bit different. Um, what my suggestion in choosing someone would be to look at previous works in a similar industry, um, maybe get uh, three or four kind of referrals um, before you spend the cash. Um, sometimes it's it's cheaper to go overseas and sometimes that works and sometimes it's harder because it, it's uh, harder to keep things accountable. So bear that into mind when you're buying on budget and price. So I hope that helps. Great. Do you have any more questions? Okay. I'm not seeing any more questions. So, oh, we have one more. Okay. So this one's from Sharon. I have a website through the company I am affiliated with. Does your company look at these sites? Uh, yes. So it depends on how it's structured. So a lot of time, if you are um, affiliated with a company, so it, um, um, it could be like skincare, it could be anything like that. Uh, a lot of the time, depending on how the website's structured, you, you're effectively a page within a website, not your own website. So and there's some things you can do. Um, it would just be kind of like a case-on-case -case kind of um, uh, conversation, maybe. If it is if it is your own micro website that's detached from the main site, then there's a lot more you can do. If it's just a page within a bigger organization, then you are a little bit more limited. But we can yeah we can take a look for sure. If you want to send that over, I can take a quick look. I think you might have just uh, uh, answered the question because she said, are you able to look at our website and advise what is needed for 2016 and moving forward? I mean, look at the <laughs> website and tweak it. I think I think it's more than a page. Certainly. Yeah, just the, um, if you drop me a quick email on that, I can uh, take a look later this afternoon. Perfect. Any more questions? She said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so Alana sent you her info already. Just wanted you to know that. <laughs> um, so do we have any more questions, anybody? Okay, so I'm not seeing any more questions. So I guess on that note, we're going to uh, end today's webinar. Just wanted to uh, send a thank you out to Christian of Marwick Internet Marketing. Thank you so much, Christian, for doing today's uh, presentation. We really appreciate it. And I feel like, uh, um, obviously, our accredited businesses got a lot out of it. And I'm sure that um, you know a few of them will be contacting you directly. Um, so anyways, uh, I guess we will be ending today's webinar. Um, you know, everybody have a great morning, and uh, we will be seeing you possibly on our next webinar. All right. Have a good one. Thank you.